Welcome to another video. We are going to do one today. I'm calling it species awareness because here at DM Exotics, our goal is to open your eyes to new species. If you watch the standard YouTube videos, you are going to see the same thing over and over and over again. But I want to provide value to my viewers, to the people that take the time to sit down and watch my videos. I want you guys to get something out of it. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of snakes and other reptiles things that you may have never seen before. Some you may have, especially for the people that pay attention to this channel. I try to show you as much as I can, but we have a few new things to show you. So I'm gonna head over to the Wildcat side and we're gonna film some pretty interesting things. So let's go. So we are here doing a whole multi-purpose trip. We are picking animals for our facility. We're picking animals for export. And we're also picking animals to show you guys just really nice examples of specimens. Why? This one is actually really amazing. This is Boiga benculuensis, a very nice intense green one. This is a male and very, very big, big one. They normally don't reach this size, but this one is a very beautiful one. So I'm trying to decide if this animal should go into our facility or if it should be going into our facility for export. I don't exactly know the purpose yet, but I really like this particular animal. Watch the camera because the reach is far <laughs> with these guys. But a very arboreal snake, very lightweight, kind of uh, laterally compressed. But I just wanted to show you guys, the green on this one is pretty incredible. It's very dark dark green color and if i stretch this snake out which is pretty much impossible but it is very long it's wrapped around my left hand a couple of times so that's about a six foot snake pretty easy to manipulate i mean they are rear fang but they're slow in striking and they're pretty easy to read. But I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one. But it may be for, for export. So I wanna pick a couple nice pairs of orange phase trapezii and Ben Kuluensis. Yes, I know you're looking right at me. <laughs> so just wanted to show you guys. And we're gonna go through and we're gonna show you guys more. There's a lot of really nice animals that just arrived here. <laughs> so normally I wouldn't show something like this because this animal is deep in shed, but we recently hatched out some baby melanota and this one is really, really unique. It is lacking bands. It just has dots somewhere along the body. The dots disappear and then they pick up again towards the back. So we're going to hold on to this one for future breeding stock. This is the appearance that I really like for myself. And this animal is deep in shed. You can see that the eyes are opaque, but the variability in melanota is a wide, wide range. And this one is a bit extreme towards the lack of pattern side of things. Really cool. Maybe I'll give you guys an update next time we are coming through here on this particular animal and hopefully our timing will be better and it won't be deep in shed. But as an adult, that animal is going to be unbelievable. So my goal with making a lot of these videos is to bring new species awareness to you guys. I think DM Exotics does a really good job of that. I'm gonna show you another new one that most of you probably are not aware of. This is Lycodon ephraenis. This is a wolf snake and it is a very interesting animal. It starts out black with just a very few white or off-white bands. And then the belly is black and yellow banded like a crate. As they get into adulthood, it starts to go away. You can still see some yellow bands here, here, here. They get a little bit bigger than this. And they kind of remind me of a cross between like a 
African house snake and maybe like a like a small python species like an Antaresia or something or maybe a Caribbean boa by the way that unique head shape is but we have a pair here we're holding on to them and they're just really really interesting to me so here's another one you guys another species of snake that I don't believe is in the hobby these are Athenodipsis vertebralis they are a mountain slug eater coming from the Cameron Highlands. They like cooler temperatures. We're keeping them in the air conditioned room and they seem to be doing quite well. They are laterally compressed, so they are very much keeled, but just amazing. The eyes really trip me out. They are super like a burnt orange, very, very different looking. These are actually very rare. We have a few here in the facility now. I, they are a locally protected species, but I know I can get them out. So I think I'm gonna to try to get some of these in the June shipment. Basically in the reptile hobby, at least for Southeast Asian species of slug and snail eaters, we have Piraeus and we have Aplopeltura. Those are the two most common ones. We have those as well, but when I saw these, I was kind of like, whoa, hold on a minute. These are something different. So I really like these. These things look really cool, real ominous looking with those eyes. And we have one baby here also. I'm gonna put these away. Oh, and they're actually a little feisty. Very much unlike snail and slug eaters. I've never seen defensive behavior from something like that. So let me show you the baby, you guys. The baby is really bright and beautiful. Okay, you guys, are you ready for this? This one is really, really small. It is a fresh hatchling of the species that I just showed you. A very bright color, orange. Very, very neat. So there you have another one. I should start calling this species awareness. I keep showing you guys all these new things that probably 99% of you aren't even aware of that exist. But Malaysia is really a prime spot for all of these weird, obscure snakes. It is a very, very interesting place. We see a lot and it is very refreshing when we continue to see even brand new species that really take us by surprise as well. Now we are not here full time, so I'm sure we're even missing some of the real special stuff that shows up, but I got these for you guys anyway. So Athena Dipsis, really cool. Okay, so back to species awareness. This is Aplopeltura boa. This is a snail eating snake, but they are not all created equal. This one is really, really extreme example. Has a lot of white and lichen. Those are not scars, you guys. That is natural pattern. This one is basically what we would call like a lichen pattern one. High white, lots of white on the face there. Very, very nice. So there's quite a few here at the moment, but this one I would say is probably the best one that I could find. So we'll have some of these coming in June. I told my facility manager to um, keep an eye out and set aside, especially any that look like this. This is the good stuff. So this one's pretty insane right here. I'm seeing pink. I'm seeing some blue, some green. Very nervous, that particular animal. It keeps <laughs> putting itself into a, a roll up. <laughs> okay, there, unroll yourself. There we go. But these three are absolutely amazing.
So as you guys know, another one of my absolute favorites here, we have another baby, Pataius carinata. This one is getting moved into our facility today into the quarantine room. This is a nice big baby. And I'm seeing a little bit of unique coloration on this one. I'm seeing some kind of browns and tans in here towards the back. So I don't know how that's gonna translate into this animal as an adult, but hopefully we are going to find out this animal is just newly arrived, so we are going to move it over and it is going to get a lot more dedicated care in the facility like all the rest of the animals. But super cool, super cute, and hopefully this little one is destined for greatness. That chrome blue tongue is absolutely amazing. So. Always excited when I can add another one of these into the facility group. So, you ready for that? So another one here, this one is also quite rare. This is Oligodon signatus. I've had a couple of these kukri snakes in the past. They do okay, but I have never kept any like super long term. So I'm not sure how they do on like a really long term basis, but I had luck getting these to eat geckos for me. They have a very, very small head as you can see proportionately speaking. So you have to be able to provide them very small prey but it's not a bitey snake compared to other oligodon. It's very strange, actually. The anatomy is different. The pattern is a bit different from other oligodon. That genus, a lot of times, those snakes kind of all look very, very similar to one another. But this one in particular is very different. So just trying to show you guys some of the different stuff. Oh, and I guess I should show you the belly. It's pretty intense. So as I was saying, just trying to show you guys some of the more different things here, I try my best to make my videos a learning experience for most of you so you can see something new, minus all the antics and all the uh, antagonizing the animals and all that stuff, minus all of that, give you guys some sort of benefit when you watch these videos and show you guys new stuff. So sunbeam snakes from Indonesia are super common. They're usually available in really high numbers and they usually come in in pretty bad condition. Here in Malaysia, I rarely see sunbeams available, but there are two here at this time and I'm probably going to bring these over in June. Of note is this little baby. Sunbeam snakes as babies, they have this pink colored head. For those of you that watched the videos, I think maybe a year or two ago, we actually caught a younger sunbeam than this in our front lawn in Thailand, and it had a very bright pink head. But even this one still has a little bit of the pink colored head, still a very young animal. But I think I'm gonna bring these two over, and I'm probably gonna be avoiding sunbeams from Indonesia because I'm just not happy with the quality but these two are in beautiful condition and yeah, the June shipment is shaping up to be quite interesting. And for those of you that know me, I don't do things last minute. I'm already working on all that stuff, even though it is still February, it'll probably be March by the time you guys are watching this video and our shipment will still be three months out. So we're, we're already planning but I'm sure somebody watching my videos is going to enjoy this. <laughs> They're actually quite cute and beautiful. So if you guys remember the previous video that we did at our facility, we put two Hypsoscopus plumbea, plumbaceous water snakes into our facility. They are still in quarantine. They are doing amazing. They are super fat and they're both females. They're actually a pretty rare acquisition here in Malaysia, but to my surprise, one showed up and it is a male. 
So now we have a trio. So that's really cool. I'm not 100% sure what we are going to be doing with this 1.2 trio group, but I will entertain any inquiries, but they are doing really amazing. The two females in the facility, I believe we are feeding them frogs. And this one I think is on fish just due to the smaller size. The frogs that we get here are about like this big or so. So uh, we may have to resort to fish just because of the size of the prey items that we can or cannot get here in Malaysia. So that is pretty cool. Happy about that. So here's another one. I've just been looking through some animals. This is a Pataeus fusca, and it is a very, very nice one in very nice condition. I figured I would take this opportunity to show you guys. They are very different. They are super visual. They are very aware. And a lot of times they'll just kind of dart directly at your face, but it doesn't mean they're going to bite. They just they're just launching themselves for something to hold on to. But they're very fast and very aware snakes. There are some babies here. I haven't really looked through them yet, but this one just really stood out to me as having amazing body weight. Big giant tongue. When I first pulled this animal out, it was really, edgy kind of scooting around pretty fast, but now it's very calm. But very nice snakes, very, very interesting animals. So that is it for the video. I hope you guys got something out of it. Maybe I impressed some of you and showed you something new. When I see things that I have never seen before and I'm pretty stoked and impressed, I would expect a lot of you guys to feel the same way because I kind of feel not to sound arrogant. If it's something that I've never seen before in person, chances are that a lot of you, most of you also have never seen that animal before. So that is about it for the video. You guys, I don't push this very often, but we do have a Patreon. We have three different tiers. We, it comes with Discord. There's uh, various merch available that goes with those packages. If you want to join, if you want access to our Discord, we try to do a Zoom at least once a month. We have a pretty good amount now of people that join in. We have some really good discussion. I start always with updating you guys kind of where we're at, what's going on, what our imports may consist of, what we're breeding and all that kind of thing. So everybody that's in there is really up to date on what we're doing. I can't always update everybody through YouTube, but through our Zoom, we're open to questions. People can ask us directly. Discord, the same thing. I'm posting photos on Discord of some really weird things that I see along the way. New species, breeding developments, the whole thing. So if that's something that you're interested interested in, please consider joining. I'm having a lot of fun doing it, engaging with a really nice core group of people that are polite, intelligent, enjoy the same things that I do. And I really just enjoy having those discussions. So please consider it. The links are in the description below. I welcome everybody. And again, I try to provide value. Think about it. If that's for you, please join. And thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one. Take care.